Hello, everyone, and welcome to Roots Tech. I am Krista Cowan. I am the corporate genealogist here at Ancestry. Some of you may know me as the Barefoot Genealogist from my online YouTube series by the same name. Every year at Roots Tech, I have the opportunity of sharing with you what's new at Ancestry. We do a review of what's happened in the year since our last Roots Tech together, and then I'll give you a little sneak preview of some of the things coming up. We have a lot of things that we've been working on and some really fun announcements to make. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in. First, we're going to start by talking about some of the new and updated tools and experiences on both the website and especially on the Ancestry mobile app. Now, like many of you, I'm used to using lots of screens to do my family history research. But this last year, the Ancestry mobile app has become a constant companion to me in my family history experience. The app is free to download and you can access your Ancestry account directly through the app on both iOS and Android devices. Now, this last year, we did something kind of incredible. We used to have two separate apps, one for your family history and one for your DNA experience. We have now taken those and combined them into a single app so that you can access and integrate your family history research and your DNA research more easily and readily. Another thing we introduced in the mobile app this last year was tree sharing. Now, tree sharing has been around on the browser version of Ancestry for a really long time. But we wanted people who are using the mobile app to be able to share their family tree as well. You have the same three sharing options. So you can invite someone to be a guest, a contributor, or an editor. Now a guest just gets to view your tree. So that's the easiest way to share your family tree with your family members who don't have an Ancestry subscription. No subscription is required to be able to view the tree that you've been working on and creating for them. A contributor can upload things like photos and stories. That's gonna become really important here in just a minute. And uh, an editor can do anything in your tree that you can do. So you're gonna to wanna to be really careful and thoughtful about who you give editor access to. So those are the three levels of sharing. Those are the same three levels of sharing that have existed in the browser version of Ancestry for years, but we have now brought them into the mobile app experience. Now, some of you may have seen the main stage presentation where our CEO, Deb Liu, announced a brand new partnership with Photomine. Photomine is one of the leading companies for uh, artificial intelligence, photo scanning, and they do some really cool things that we've been able to uh, incorporate into the mobile app. So I'm going to share with you a couple of things. Currently, these are only available through the mobile app. So basically what this technology does is it takes your mobile device and it turns it into a scanner. I don't know about you, but I remember the days of lugging my giant scanner around to my grandma's house or trying to get a camera to take a picture at just the right angle and then having to upload photos. I also have a whole series of photo albums from my great grandmother where she has glued photos onto black construction paper in a bound photo album. And sometimes there's four or five or six pictures on one page. And that's has been really difficult to get scanned correctly and then get those images split up. Well, the new PhotoMind tools on the Ancestry mobile app are gonna help make that so much easier. Let me just walk you really quickly through a couple of things. The first thing is you need to find time and a place where you can do this. Uh, I have a little desk set up in my house where I have the things laid out and then I can just go through and do them a little bit at a time when I have the time. It's also important to have good lighting. So whether you're near an op um, a window with some good light that comes through it or you need to adjust some lighting around the room to make sure that there's no glare on any of those photos. You want to get as close as possible with your mobile device. So whether you're using a phone or a tablet, you want to make sure that you can be close and hold it steady. We've got a little tip for that. And then you want to make sure that it's a clean background. So you want to make sure that it's 
a photo page in a photo album that you're taking a picture of, or that you are on a clean desk as you lay out the different photos. So here's just an example. Here are a couple of photos. There's one of me and my grandma and one of my dad. And I just, these are loose photos I have. I just laid them down and I can push and hold that button on my phone for three seconds, hold it steady and it will scan the images. Or you'll notice up here, we also have a little microphone button. So once you stabilize your mobile device, you can just use your voice to, um, to scan the image instead of having to try to hold the phone steady while you also push the button. It's a, a really handy little tool. Now here's where the magic happens. Those images get scanned and then the technology automatically can detect that there are separate images here and it will automatically split those images, crop in on them, and then upload them as individual images to your photo gallery. That's another new thing. So on the web browser version of Ancestry, there's always been a gallery for your tree and then the individual galleries for the people in your tree. On the mobile version, we've had the individual people galleries, but we have just now introduced the tree level gallery. So it's gonna take those images that you scan very quickly and upload them to that tree gallery. Now we've also introduced on both the mobile and browser version, some new photo editing tools that are gonna allow you to do some image enhancement, some colorization, if that's something that's of interest to you. And all of that is gonna take place in your tree gallery. So here's my tree gallery with some of the photos that I've uploaded. We've got really clear iconography here to show you exactly what's happening. So any uh, image that has a little person head attached to it means that that image has been attached to or tagged to a person in your tree. If there is no um, little person icon, that means that this image has been uploaded maybe as part of this bulk uploading process that you're doing as you're taking photos with your uh, mobile device. And that means that this photo needs to be attached to a person or multiple people in your family tree. You'll also notice the little icon here. It's a little magic wand. And that tells me that this particular image has had some colorization or some enhancements. Now we don't replace or remove the original image. We just allow you to go in and toggle back and forth between the original version and the enhanced version directly through the gallery. So that's what your gallery is going to look like now. Now we also have enabled this last year, uh, tagging of people in the photo. So it used to be you could take a photo and attach it to as many people as you wanted. Well, now you can actually tag who's who in that particular photo. Uh, this, it automatically detects faces and allows you to do that. And the process of tagging it also then attaches it to those particular people in your family tree. Another fun new feature only available on the mobile app is what we're calling photo line. And we've seen some of these shared out on social media with the hashtag photo line. They're super fun. Uh, they're automatically generated by the, by the mobile app based on the photos that you're uploading and attaching to the people in your tree. So here's me. And then this is my mother. This is her mother and then her mother. So four generations of my maternal line. And it automatically created that um, as a photo line. It also can, can pull from different branches of your family tree. So this is my grandmother on my dad's side and then her mother and her mother. And so I've had two photo lines created so far. And those are kind of a fun thing to see and to share and start to look for myself in the faces of my ancestors. Another new feature that we have just announced is called Ancestry Stories. Ancestry Stories is also a mobile app only feature for creation. I'll explain that in, a, in just a minute. Uh, you're going to see if you update your mobile app this week uh, or next week after Roots Tech, you're going to see that this Ancestry Stories feature is now available. When you're on the Discover tab in the mobile app, it's going to have a little uh, icon there in the bubble tray. Uh, if you're familiar with how that works on uh, social media apps, you're, you might recognize that. When you click that, it's going to ask you who you want to create a story about. Now, this is a really big deal for me. Um, I do, I am the primary family history researcher in my family. I took over for my parents years ago. They have since become back involved in it and we work together really well. 
but I want to share these stories out with my siblings and my nephews and my niece and really involve the family. And they want those stories. They want to hear what I'm learning. They don't want to do the family tree work or the DNA work or the, or the research, but they do want to hear and have those stories shared with them. And this is a really easy way for me to do that in a format that they're familiar with, meeting them where they are. My nephews are, you know, grew up with mobile phones in their hands, basically. And so this is going to allow them to uh, read and understand more about their ancestors as I share those stories out. So the defaults, uh, when you click to create a story, is it's going to show you your close family. So grandparents and parents first. You can then click on the little filter icon and you can build a story from anybody in your tree. You can do just direct ancestors. It's kind of a repetitive phrase because that's what ancestors means is direct. Um, you can do end of line ancestors, living relatives. You can just go to every a list of everybody in your tree and find a person you want to tell a story about. So we give you the ability to tell a story or share a story about anybody in your tree. Now I'm going to select my grandfather for this example. And what it's going to do is it's going to take the information I already have in my family tree about him and create a little um, life history or snippet about him automatically. I can edit that fully editable. I can also change the picture. So this takes the profile picture I have for him in my tree. But if I want to use a different picture for this story, I can do that. Uh, oh, then go back, here we go, then I can add additional uh, slides to the story. I could add a title slide, I could add another person to the story if I want to tell a story maybe about my grandparents' wedding or if I want to tell a story about something that my grandfather and his sister did as children. I can add photos that I already have uploaded to my gallery. See, those photos are going to come in handy. And if you've shared your tree and other people are also contributing photos, now all of a sudden you have this really rich resource to both collect some of those photos that might be in your aunt's attic in a box and to then share those stories out with others. Coming soon, we will also give you the ability to share some of the records that you may have attached to that person in your tree, some events that will create a map for places uh, so you can show places where different events in their life occurred and then you can also create a text box so we're just going to do a couple of these really quickly in this case i've got this lovely photo of my grandfather when he was about two years old with his sister and i can click to to add motion so it's a it's a still photo but i can add um, like panning or zooming into the photo to make it move as people are watching it. I can add text. I can click the little text icon here and I can add some text to it. I can move that text wherever I want to on the page. I could add emojis into the text as I'm doing that if I want. I can also rearrange these slides. So as I create them, you know, I create a new one that's a story about my grandfather. Uh, maybe I want to change the color of that story to make it a little differentiated from some of the other things that I'm sharing. Um, and then I can make sure that they're all in the right order and I can preview that story. In this case, I just built a simple little four slide story. Uh, you can put up to 12 slides in one of these stories. And much like elsewhere um, in uh, different social media platforms, as you watch this, these stories are gonna be about six seconds per slide and you can just press and hold to read it if it's going too fast for you. So it's a, you can preview it before you publish it. Uh, it'll show up here in the little um, ribbon, bubble ribbon up top in your Discover feed until uh, you publish it. As soon as you publish it, it's gonna save it to that person profile page in your tree. So now anybody who views my grandfather in my public family tree will be able to see that story that I created. In addition to that, it's going to sit here in my feed for about 24 hours after I publish it. And I can share it to other people. So I can share this story that I created. It will uh, allow me to send a, a link in a text message to my brothers and my sister, to my nephews and my niece, to my parents, to my aunts and uncles and cousins and anybody else I want to. I can send that out. They can then get a, click the link uh, and they'll need to have the Ancestry app. But again, it's free 
uh, and they can watch the story that I've created about our grandfather. I'm so excited about the possibilities with this. Uh, it also then will appear as a hint. So a couple of my cousins are on Ancestry. They have their own family trees on Ancestry with my grandfather in their tree. And so this will show up in the mobile app um, in that bubble feed as a hint for them to watch the story. And then they have the option to also save that story to their tree if they so choose. Once they've watched it, if they don't save it to their um, tree, it does go away after 24 hours. So uh, it won't come back. They would have to go find it in my tree. So that's kind of how that's, that works. We're just launching this this week for Roots Tech, and I'm so excited to see the stories that you create. If you want to share the stories you're creating on social media, please use the hashtag my ancestry story. I'm going to be sharing several of mine throughout the week on my Instagram. So uh, you can find me on Instagram at Krista Cowan, or just do a search on Instagram for the Barefoot Genealogist. And in my Instagram stories, I'll be sharing um, some of the stories that I've created just to give you some, maybe some creative inspiration, or just to give you an idea of how it works. And then hopefully you can ask any additional questions you might have there on Instagram. Okay, a couple more things about the mobile app, and then we're going to talk about genealogical record content that we've published over the last year. This last year, we also introduced a new feature on the mobile app that is a widget that shows you the upcoming birth and wedding and death anniversaries in your tree. So it shows up in your Discover feed. So you can see that here. Um, you can also add it as a widget onto your mobile device where it will show up wherever your widgets are. Mine are on a back page uh, and it uh, will show you the next three events coming up in your family tree. I've found that to be super handy. Now here just a, here's just a laundry list of other changes that we have made in the last year. We've updated the message center. We're continuing to improve the performance of the message center. We now allow you to share images that you've saved to your tree through in a message to another user. And just this last week, we now allow you to share links in your ancestry messages to other users so that you can direct them to a specific person in your tree if you wanna copy that URL or to somewhere else on the web where you may have additional information available for them regarding the conversation that you're having. We've also just recently launched what we're calling search results badges. So when you're viewing your list of search results, we will show you if you already have this record saved to your tree. We'll show you if this was a record that you already viewed recently or within the last year. Uh, we'll show you if this is a record that's sitting in your hints waiting to be processed. So look for those search results badges. We've made some major changes to the logged in homepage on Ancestry on the web browser. And so you're going to want to take a look at that. We've been running three separate versions of the logged in homepage. And so we're just migrating everyone over to the new homepage. And then we're continuing to listen to the feedback that you've given. As a matter of fact, some great feedback from customers was just implemented this last week um, to differentiate some of the sections of the homepage with some additional borders and colors to make them stand out a little more. Uh, we also moved the search box back up a little higher on the homepage. So we love the feedback. Keep it coming. We want to make sure that those experiences as you are on the website meet your needs and help you find what you're looking for so that you can dive right into making your family history discoveries. And along those same veins, based on a lot of customer feedback, we have recently revamped the tree view in family or the family view in family trees. So there's a pedigree view that's just you, parents, grandparents, and so on. And then there's also you can toggle to what's called family view, which is you and your parents and your grandparents. And then you can expand it out to siblings and aunts and uncles and cousins and nieces and nephews and um, kind of work your way around the tree. The biggest change to family view is it used to be it would only show you four or five generations at a time. And if, if you tried to expand to view another set of family members, it would refocus the tree and collapse that information. This allows you to just keep expanding it any direction you want uh, so that you can click and drag uh, anywhere in your tree uh, all at once. 
We have also continued to update Ancestry DNA communities. So we, we did our annual ethnicity estimate update just this last fall. Uh, we do that about once a year in the fall, typically. But Ancestry DNA communities continue to, uh, new communities continue to form in the network of more than 20 million people who've taken the Ancestry DNA test. And we have, uh, so we introduce new communities every few months. So always be sure to go back in and check your DNA story. And then we've got some new DNA tools that are in the works coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. As a matter of fact, you can keep up with all of the new tools and developments by following us on the Ancestry YouTube channel. So if you just go to YouTube, type in Ancestry, you'll see our channel there right at the top. And that's going to, if you subscribe, allow you to be notified whenever I put out a what's new video for the month, uh, where I walk you through some of the changes that have been made that month. And that's going to be one of the easiest ways to keep up with what's happening throughout the year. So you don't have to wait for this video uh, annually at Roots Tech. Although I'm still really glad you're here. Okay. That's just some of the new tools that we are just introducing this week that we've put out over the course of the last year. I'm super excited to see how you utilize those tools. Um, and again, please use the hashtag MyAncestryStory if you share any of those stories on social media anywhere. Let's talk about historical record content. So Ancestry continues to invest millions of dollars in digitizing, uh, acquiring, digitizing, and indexing uh, historical records that we can publish online for you. We have more than 30 billion records online from 80 countries around the world. And in 2021, we added more than 654 million records to the site. So the collection just continues to grow. Now. If you have never heard me speak before, this might be news, but if you've watched any video or heard me present at any conference, you know my favorite thing on the entire Ancestry website is the card catalog. It's found under the search menu and it allows you to keep up with what's new and updated at any time. When you go to the, the card catalog, the default sort is by date added. You can change that to date updated. And then what you can look for is anything that has a green updated tag or a green new tag telling you what's happening with those particular sets of records. Let me just give you a little insight. So the way that we update record collections, we might have an existing database where we get additional records or additional years or additional counties that become available. And so it's a maybe a database that's 10 or 20 years old on Ancestry that we're adding some new information to. I'll give you an example of that in, a, in just a minute. We also continue to publish new databases on Ancestry, new sets of records that we're acquiring for the very first time. And I'll show you a couple of examples of that as well. So this is an example of some new databases. So Ancestry uh, owns a website called newspapers.com. Newspapers.com continues to publish uh, newspapers to the tune of more than 600 million pages. And those newspapers date all the way back to the 1700s. And they go all the way up through last month. And in those newspapers, as you know, there are really rich details that help tell our family stories. Sometimes there's even vital records like births, marriages, and deaths. So a couple of years ago, Ancestry indexed the newspaper's collection and made the index to those newspaper images available on Ancestry. We created a marriage index and we created an obituary index, hundreds of millions of records there. 1.2 billion is where we're at now because as new newspapers continue to come on, we update the existing databases. And now we have also added databases for additional countries. So for example, if you go into the card catalog and you type in newspapers.com, what you're going to see is those US databases with a several hundred million records in the marriages and obituaries index. We've now added the same databases for Canada and for Australia. We are looking at ways to do that for additional countries based on the volume of newspapers that we have for those countries on newspapers.com. 
Now, just to be super clear, the index is going to be part of the subscriptions on Ancestry. When you click through to view the image, you will need a subscription to newspapers.com to view those images. And like I said, really rich details. I've broken through probably more brick walls using newspapers than any other single source or record type uh, that I use. Next up, let's talk just a little bit about the U.S. Wills and Probates collection. Now, Ancestry launched this collection about eight or nine years ago uh, they, from images provided by FamilySearch. There were more than 170 million pages. And when we initially indexed this set of records, we only indexed the name of the person whose will it was. So I, John Smith, being of sound mind and body, right, write this will. But what you know, if you've ever looked at a will is, it lists so many more people. It lists maybe a spouse and the children, any persons that they may have enslaved, witnesses, um, sons-in-law, like, and sometimes it lists very specific relationships and details about those people. Sometimes grandchildren are included. So a single will could contain dozens of names, but originally we only indexed it by the name of the person whose will or probate file it was. Well, over the course of the last year, Ancestry has been in the process of going back state by state through that wills and probates collection and indexing the names of all of the people mentioned and any relationships, including enslaved individuals. And so now, you're going to start to see on in the card catalog as you look at the wills and probates collections, uh, individual states are going to be updated. That is what has been updated. And we're almost done with all 50 states. Another set of records that we launched on the site this last year was more than 3.5 million searchable records from the Freedmen's Bureau and Bank collection. It is the largest searchable collection of these records. This set of records, if you're not familiar with the Freedmen's uh, Bureau, the Freedmen's Bureau was one of the first social programs set up to help take care of um, refugees and newly freed people immediately following the Civil War after our country had been thrown into that chaos and there needed to be schools set up and hospitals. There were rations to be handed out. There were labor contracts and disputes to manage. And so field offices were set up all over the South to help handle that after the war. And so these records are a vital piece of, of research information, particularly for those who descend from formerly enslaved individuals, because they're going to list them by name, sometimes list their former slave holder, so that you can continue to do research into the family history of those people. So these are records that have existed uh, in various forms and formats, and sometimes just in images that have now been indexed and are searchable. Last up, I know you're all dying to know more about what's going to happen with the 1950 U.S. federal census. Well, the government releases the census on April 1st, 2022, which according to my calculations is in just less than a month. And I have been counting down the days for well over a year now. There were more than 150 million people enumerated in the 1950 census. If you were born uh, before 1975, chances are you're going to find a parent, uh, maybe both parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles in this census at a really critical time. Now remember, 1940, the U.S. was still in the middle of the Great Depression. During the 19th decade of the 1940s, there was a world war. We came out of that depression. There was a lot of mobility around the country uh, for all sorts of various reasons. And so this census is going to be really important for helping us locate people and families, maybe connect with some of our DNA matches. So Ancestry has announced that we will be applying um, brand new handwriting recognition technology as soon as the images become available to us on April 1st to get the index of that done as quickly and as efficiently as possible. We have also partnered with FamilySearch with their vast army of volunteers so that are going to go back through that handwriting recognition computer generated index and add corrections um, and clean that up so that we can then uh, publish uh, the most accurate 
and efficient and fast index possible. We want you to find your family or yourselves in that census and continue to be able to make family history discoveries. So if you are not yet following our blog, I would invite you to do that. You can go to blogs, plural, .ancestry.com. Uh, we will be keeping you updated there. We also have a Facebook page, and so I would encourage you to follow Ancestry on Facebook. That's going to give you access to a Facebook Live, which I do every other week or so, usually on Tuesday afternoons. We will provide you with updates there. I mentioned earlier the Ancestry YouTube channel. Ancestry also has an Instagram channel. I personally have an Instagram channel. You can follow us in all the places and be kept up to date on all the information that you need for the release of the 1950 census, but also tips and tricks about how to help with your family history research along the way and notifications of new DNA communities, new tools, both in the mobile app and on the web browser and new historical records as they are published every week. Well, that's all I have for you today. And with this year's update of what's new at Ancestry, I'm Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.